Okay, welcome to another video on complex numbers. So I know this looks quite similar to the last question, but it's actually a little bit different. So notice it's minus the square root of three plus i, and you'll see why this is so different now in a second, okay? So in our last video, we were dealing with a complex number that was here, and it was in the, it was the first quadrant where the imaginary axis and the real axis are positive, so it was quite easy. When we're dealing with uh, complex numbers in this one here, where the amount of real axis is minus, or here, or here, anywhere like that, they're just a little bit more difficult, okay? It's because here, the angle theta is quite straightforward. In other cases, though, the angle theta can be any of these angles here, okay? So it's a little bit more complicated, and we're just gonna look at how to deal with it, okay? It's still the same principle, though, and you can use, we're just gonna deal with the question uh, in this quadrant. You can use the same principle to deal with uh, any of these questions, okay? Okay, so I just got rid of that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna write out the complex form again, or sorry, the, the polar form again or cos theta plus i sine theta, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna do a little sketch. Just gonna make that extend a little bit further, okay? So our complex number minus the square root of three plus i is gonna be somewhere out here, okay? So again, it's gonna draw our line in here, draw this angle here, and careful, this angle is alpha, it's not theta, okay? The angle theta is gonna be this one here. So theta is always measured from the real axis here. Okay, if we're gonna go real and imaginary. Um, and now I'm gonna do this in red. This line here and this line here. So this is gonna be the square root of three and this is one, okay? That's just the length. So this point here is gonna be uh, i and this is minus the square root of three. So we're just looking at the length and we don't really care about the coordinates just for now, okay? So I'll calculate or first. We're gonna say or is the square root of um, minus the square root of three squared plus one squared, which the minus doesn't actually matter. It still ends up being the square root of four, which is equal to two. Okay, so or is equal to two. So that's our length here. And now we need to find the argument or we need to find theta. Okay, so the way you do this is we find the angle alpha first. Okay, so we know that alpha, sorry, sorry tan of alpha it's equal to opposite over adjacent. So it's one over the square root of three. So we can find that alpha is equal to the inverse tan of one over the square root of three. And again, this is all done in your calculator, that the inverse tan is going to be pi over six. And again, always has to be in radians, okay? So if alpha is equal to pi over six, and we know that a straight line or 180 degrees is equal to pi, that's the amount in radians. That means theta, I'll go, go over here. Theta is gonna be pi minus pi over six. So that means theta is equal to five pi over six, okay? So let's put a little box around that. So now we have our theta, our argument, and we have or, so we can write our polar form, okay? I'm gonna do this in orange. So we're gonna have z is equal to two cos 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. And there is our answer, okay? That's all there is to it. So just that little trick that you have to find alpha first and then use alpha to find theta. So you can use different tricks. So say if, uh, I'll go through that later actually. Um, I'll just go to one or two points about this first. So if we want to check this, we can find that if you want to put that into your calculator, so put two multiplied by cos five pi over six, uh, and then two multiplied by sine of five pi over six, you're going to get the answer z is equal to minus the third, or minus the square root of three plus i, okay? And the important thing here is there's no minus anywhere here in this formula. It's always cos theta plus i sine theta. And the reason for this is that if you stick it into your calculator, just cos five pi over six, it'll give you a minus answer. So the cos and the sine know already what quadrant it's in, if it's minus or plus. So you don't need to worry about that. Just leave it the way it is and the angle and the cos will deal with which one goes minus, which one goes plus, okay? So as long as your angle is right, you know you'll be right. And you can check it if you want in your calculator, just multiply two by cos five pi over six and uh, you can check it to see if you get the right answer. In this case, you will. 
um, and now I'm just going to make a little point. So the, the one, the question we did here, we had to get our angle alpha, and then from that we had to get theta. You can do the same. It doesn't matter what angle you're getting. So if I draw a line just across here, um, if we're getting something here, okay, again you're going to find your angle alpha, and then you're just going to add it. So theta is going to be equal to alpha plus pi. So it's going to be this angle is pi. And that angle is alpha, so alpha plus pi is going to be your whole angle theta. And the same thing here. If you're looking for this complex number here, you're going to find alpha here. And then theta is going to be equal to 2 pi minus alpha, because 2 pi is a whole circle. So 2 pi minus alpha will be this whole bit here, okay, which is what you're looking for. Yeah, so it's just uh, it's the same method each time just to get like, a couple of different little tricks, but it's the same way to get your polar coordinates. And again, if you do it right, your polar coordinates, they, sh they still shouldn't be negative, but when you multiply it out, you might get your negative, uh, your negative value of the rectangular form. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense um, and I hope you enjoyed the video.